Warren Buffett is one of the best, if not the best investor of the past 60 years. And while the new school of investors have been beating Warren with outsized returns in 2020, 2021 has seen him roar back to life while the hot investors last year are down significantly. But can you have both Warren Buffett-like safety and consistency, but also invest in high growth stocks of the future? Absolutely you can. And we're gonna go over six Warren Buffett investing principles and apply them to the current market environment and those high growth stocks that we all love so we can hopefully get Kathy Wood type returns with Warren Buffett-like safety. The answer is that investors behave in very human ways, which is they get very excited during bull markets and they look in the rear view mirror and they say, I made money last year, I'm gonna make more money this year, so this time I'll borrow, you know, or, or the neighbor says, you know, I wasn't in last year when that neighbor was dumber than I, I made a lot of money, so I'm gonna go in this year. So they're always looking in the rear view mirror. And when they look in the rear view mirror and they see a lot of money having been made in the last few years, they plow in and they just push and push and push on prices. And when they look in the rearview mirror and they see no money having been made, they just say, this is a lousy place to be. So they don't care what's going on in the underlying business. And it's, it's astounding, but that's, that makes for a huge opportunity. Just huge opportunity. Wow, here we are so many years after he said that, and this rings more true today than ever, regardless of what kind of stocks you buy. How many of you guys out there made 50%, 100%, 200% or more last year and expected to make right around that or more this year? I think we can all agree that what he just said happened. Margin was at all time highs December through February. Valuations was so far out of whack, it wasn't even funny and people were still plowing money into all those stocks. Now here we are just a couple of months later and many people, both large and small, receive margin calls interest in stocks overall is way down, retail investor volume is way down, and prices in some of our favorite stocks have fallen by 40%, 50%, or even more. But as Warren stated, that is where the huge opportunity was and still is in some cases. You have to avoid emotions at all cost, and this is even more critical with high growth stocks. of our wholly owned businesses we're not going to sell no matter how much anybody offers this for them. i mean if somebody offers us three times what something is worth at seas candy the buffalo news borsheims whatever it may be we're not going to sell it our inclination is not to sell things unless we get really discouraged perhaps with the management or we think the economic characteristics of the business change in a big way i mean and that happens so but we're not going to sell simply because it looks too high this is another gem that applies even more so to today's market than it did back then, and especially in high growth stocks. I could not tell you guys how many times I get asked, should I sell a stock? And unless you're a day trader or swing trader, why are you selling and engaging in market timing, which is impossible to do over the long run? If I would have sold Apple in 2005 after nearly tripling my money, I would have missed out on a literal fortune since then. So don't make the mistake of selling just because a stock is way up or way down unless something fundamentally has changed with the business. I've been taught by Ben Graham to buy things on a quantitative basis. Look around for things that are cheap. And that I was taught that, we'll say in 1949 or 50, they made a big impression on me. So I went around looking for what I call use cigar butts of stocks. And the cigar butt approach to buying stocks is that you walk down the street and you're looking around for cigar butts and you find this, on the street, this terrible looking, soggy, ugly looking cigar, one puff left in it. But you pick it up and you get your one puff, disgusting, you throw it away, but it's free. I mean, it's cheap. And then you look around for another soggy, you know, one puff cigarette. Well, that's what I did for years. It's a mistake. Uh, although you can make money doing it, but you can't make it with big money. It's so much easier just to, to buy wonderful businesses. So now I would rather buy a wonderful business at a fair price than a fair business at a wonderful price. I just love the cigar butt analogy he uses there. It is so much better to pick great companies at a fair price than to pick up a hot SPAC stock that is 70% down and hoping to make 20% off of it. 
And yes, as SPAC mania continues, there are going to be some cigar butts littered around everywhere that will be so cheap that you may try to talk yourself into thinking it's worth your time trying to see if those last few puffs are going to be incredible. I'm telling you, don't even waste your time on those. Just stick with the great ones and pay a fair price for them. I have an old fashioned belief that I can only should expect to make money in things that I understand. And when I say understand, I don't mean understand, you know, what the product does or anything like that. I mean, understand what the economics of the business are likely to look at, look like 10 years from now or 20 years from now. I know in general what the economics of, say, Wrigley chewing gum will look like 10 years from now. The internet isn't going to change the way people chew gum. It isn't going to change which gum they chew. You know, if you own the chewing gum market in a big way, and you've got double mint and spearmint and juicy fruit, those brands will be there 10 years from now. So I can't pinpoint exactly what the numbers are going to look like on Wrigley, but I'm not going to be way off if I try to look forward on something like that. That evaluating that company is within what I call my circle of competence. I understand what they do. I understand the economics of it. I understand the competitive aspects of the business. Kathy Wood says genomics is the future. Well, guess what? I don't understand that at all or the economics around it, so I'm not invested in it. The reality is, over the long run, there are many sectors that are going to give incredible returns, not just genomics. Just because Kathy Wood or a YouTuber or someone else thinks the stock is great does not make it the best choice for you. And here's an example. I'd say Warren did pretty good for himself despite not really investing in tech until Apple in 2015 or so. I mean, I was into Apple like 15 years before Warren was. The bottom line, do not invest in the next hot stock or sector if you do not understand the economics and the market around it. The biggest mistakes we've made by far I've made, not we've made, biggest mistakes I've made by far are mistakes of omission and not commission. I mean, it's the things I knew enough to do, they were within my circle of competence, and I was sucking my thumb. And that is really, those are the ones that hurt. They don't show up anyplace. I probably cost Berkshire at least $5 billion, for example, by sucking my thumb 20 years ago, or close to it when Fannie Mae was was having some troubles and we could have bought the whole company for practically nothing. And I don't worry about that if it's Microsoft because I don't know it. Because Microsoft isn't in my circle of competence. And so I, 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 I don't have any reason to think I'm entitled to make money out of Microsoft or out of Cocoa Beans or whatever. But I did know enough to understand Fannie Mae and I blew it. And that never shows up under conventional accounting. But the I know the cost of it. I know, I know you know, I, I passed it up. and. Those are the big, big mistakes, and uh, I've had plenty of them. At, uh, and you'll, unless I tell you about them in the annual report, and I resist the temptation sometimes, uh, unless I tell you about them in the annual report, you're not going to know it because it doesn't show up under conventional accounting. But omission is way bigger than commission. There is big opportunities in life have to be seized. Uh, we don't do very many things, but when we get the chance to do something that's right and big, we've got to do it. Let's look at this last correction in the high growth stocks. It's so hard to pull the trigger, especially when stocks are going down every single day. Sometimes it's because you get too greedy and you want it to go lower. And sometimes you're just scared because it's been down for weeks with no end in sight and it just keeps going down. Before the correction, all I heard was things like, I would trade my grandma if Tesla ever gets under $600 again because it's such a great opportunity. Well, it got down well under 600, and now I'm seeing those same people saying, I completely missed it. But don't feel bad about it. It happened to the greatest ever. So just learn the lesson and take the action next time a great opportunity comes. I mean, we look for three things when we hire people. We look for intelligence, we look for, in, for initiative or energy, and we look for integrity. And if they don't have the latter, the first two will kill you. Because if you're going to get somebody without integrity, you want them lazy and dumb. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, don't want them, you don't want them smart and energetic. So. As we have seen with the Tesla versus Nikola competition between Elon and Trevor, 
having next level intelligence and almost workaholic type energy and integrity separates great companies changing the world from companies that are basically shams intended to cash out the executives. And there are examples of this all over the stock market. Management is just as key of a component of evaluating a stock as the balance sheet is. You do not want to overlook the management team. So as you can see, Warren Buffett's principles absolutely apply today just as much and maybe even more than they ever have before. So hopefully you got some value out of this video. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to take your investing to the next level, consider joining the Market Insiders private group and you receive two free courses, soon to be three, my watch list with price targets, buy and sell alerts, live Q&As, private discord with a ton of awesome people that are talking all things stocks, and direct access to me to ask me anything you want. Still some spots on sale for you to lock in at that price for life. And if you don't like it, you can basically take $600 worth of courses and then cancel and you got basically a 96% discount on the courses. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.